And now we go over to Fabian to instruct you a little bit into EMG. And you will learn that you have to learn a lot. <laughs> so very, very, very short. So picture you've perhaps already seen. Larynx, very easy, opening, closing, uh, green and um, blue, putting a needle in. That's a principal idea. The so, uh, needle is a kind of microphone or microscope looking exactly at this point of muscle. Even these small muscles um, are not completely recorded by a needle. It's also only a spot of the uh, muscle. So if you do a big muscle, you should go at different places. You get a good sample, like in pathology, like putting a um, a small sample, you don't know if there's two more in another place, you should put some some samples. In the TA, it's really complicated to put needles in three different corners, but be aware of this limitation. Putting the needle into the TA, you should get activity by phonation. That's what I show up here. Activity by phonation, activity in the EMG. If you put the needle in the, the PCA, Gerhard and Beret will show you later how it works, you should get activity by, for example, sniffing. So sniffing is a good maneuver. For sniffing, it should open the larynx and you should get activity of this muscle of the backside of the larynx. If there's a damage, um, only a little bit of crash, not completely cut off the axons, there should be only 1% or 10% of the information uh, flow through the um, axons. So there could be some activity, but much less. If you scope this patient, there will be nearly no movement, perhaps a little bit movement, but you are not so sure if it's really um, activity from a muscle or more from the airflow. But if you put now a needle in, you can differentiate, sorry, you can differentiate between phonation and a little bit activity and um, phonation and no activity. And that makes a big difference for the patient. For this condition, where it's only crushed, there's a good chance that after a few days, this inflammation goes back or this um, part, uh, this patient recovers and there's a um, good chance a normal activity will take place. In contrast to a, a cut at one, if you really um, cut the nerve, there should be no activity. So if you put a needle in, there should be complete silence. And even worse, after more than 14 days, there's this pathologic spontaneous activity coming up. And it looks like we have seen it. Um, Jakubu's talk uh, here, it's very rhythmic, and we will see it tomorrow in the animal after um, the second or third hour of putting needles in, we will get some um, pathological spontaneous activity sometimes. We will see it. But we have recordings of it. And already also mentioned the re -innovation. Luckily, um, the larynx is a peripheral nerve, innervated by a peripheral nerve, so there's a good chance of recovery. So normally this denervated muscle, if there are denervated muscles, they cry for help, they cry for re -innovation. and this re nearly always um, comes true, but sometimes with mistakes, or nearly always with mistakes. So there are always scars if you cut someone. If you cut a nerve, there are always um, a little bit re misdirected re It would be, uh, yeah, more or less impossible that all nerve fibers find their original thing. And in that case, if you put a needle in, we have the same problem that um, now it's not clear separated by phonation and sniff, but having activity in both situations. But this is just a theory. In reality, often the signal becomes not so clear because the examination of the larynx is a little more complicated. 